God has smiled on me. He has set me free. God has smiled on me. He's been good to me. God has smiled on me. He has set me free. God has smiled on me. He's been good to me. God has smiled on me. He has set me free. God has smiled on me. He's been good to me. God has smiled on me. He has set me free. God has smiled on me. He's been good. He's been good. He's been good to me. Well, God bless you, Tamika. God bless you, Elder Dorset. Good morning. Brother Henderson, God bless you, Bishop and Mother Joseph. Good morning, Elaine. God bless you. Good morning, Brother Thomas. Good morning, Mother Nicholson. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Donaldson. God bless you. Good morning, Pastor and Lady Williams. Good morning, Missionary Domingo. Good morning, Sister Sabrina Smith. God bless you, Sister Sarah. Good morning, Lady Janetta. God bless you, Elder and Sister Adams. Praise the Lord to you. Good morning, Sister Gilliard. Good morning, Sister Stimson. God bless Bless you and Deacon Stimson. Good morning, Sister Lewis. Good morning, Duchess. God bless you. Good morning, Katrina. God bless you and your family. Good morning, Sister Ford. Good morning, Sister Jackson Perry. God bless you, Brother Perry and the family. Good morning, Dr. Haywood. God bless you and Sister Haywood and your family. Good morning, Elder Goins. Good morning, Sister Dawn. God bless you. God bless you, Sister Woody Stern. Good morning, Mother Street. Good morning, Sister Minor. Good morning, Brother Stokes, Sister Stokes and the family. God bless you. Good morning, Brother Wardlaw. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Rickenbacker. God bless you. Good morning, Mother McCall. God bless you. Good morning, Mother Fears. God bless you. And Pastor Fears. Good morning, Sister McWhite. Good morning, Deacon Grant. God bless you, sir. Good morning, Sister Ingram. Good morning, Brother Paul. God bless you. Good morning. Praise the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. Juliet, praise the Lord to you, Sister Angela Hatchet. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Stevens. Good morning, Sister Riley. Good morning, Sister Brown. God bless you, Sister Perkins. Good morning. God bless you, Deacon and Mother Wilson. It was great to see you yesterday, Deacon Wilson. Praise the Lord for you, praying for you. Good morning, Sister Fletcher. Good morning, Sister Blunt Robinson. God bless you and Elder Robinson. Good morning, Sister Cheek. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Young. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Wiggins. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Pedlaw. Sister Badesden. God bless you both. Good morning, Mother Walker. God bless you. Good morning, Mother Taylor. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Roberts. Good morning, Brother Keith. Good morning, Brother Bailey. God bless you, Mother Nicholson. Welcome. Good morning and praise the Lord, everybody, and welcome to the morning prayer with Pastor Reginald Davis. And as always, it's an honor, a privilege, and a pleasure to be able to spend a few moments with you with a biblical meditation and in prayer. For more things have been wrought by prayer than the world will ever know. And yesterday, we were able to witness, praise God, a miracle, walk into the midst of Refuge Temple. I've been talking and you've been hearing me pray for Deacon Adams. Deacon Adams was afflicted with a um, life-threatening um, and also debilitating illness um, in the fall of 2022. And he has been in, the, in hospitals and nursing homes and rehab centers. But yesterday, yesterday, he walked into Refuge Temple. And my God, we rejoice because Deacon Adams is our brother. He's the vice chairman of our deacon board, has been a part of our church 
for now close to 25 years and and we watched him go through and we thank God for his his spirit his faith in God his trust in God and God has validated his trust because the man of God came to church walked in the church yesterday hallelujah and I'm just thanking God I'm just thanking God because God continues to show himself to be the miracle working God that he is and Lord did we have a time in the church yesterday souls blessed strengthened, convicted, souls coming back to the Lord, souls renewing their fellowship with Jesus Christ. And I'm just grateful to God for everything that the Lord is doing. And yes, it is a function of prayer. And we're having a special prayer on Saturday morning, we are in this consecration leading to Pentecost, and I'm inviting everybody Saturday to meet us at Refuge Temple at um, 10 a.m. on Saturday morning. We're just going to pray and believe God for just an outpouring of the Spirit of God, the presence of God in our midst. As always, if you have a prayer request, we want you to share it. If you're on Facebook, please place it into the chat, or you can inbox Reginald Davis or inbox Refuge Temple Church. If you are on Instagram, you can place it in the chat or you can direct message Pastor RJD. And to everybody on the conference call and thank God for our conference call listeners and everybody on YouTube and thank God for our YouTube viewers. But anybody can use the text line and that number is 336-567-5358. Again, that number is 336-567-5358. Text your prayer requests. We're adding them to the prayer list. We're praying over them. And more importantly, we are adding our faith to your faith and believing God for what we know God is able to do. So let's go now to the word. We're going to go to the book of Psalms. Psalm number 11, Psalm number 11, and I want to read the entire Psalm. It's just seven verses, Psalm number 11. In the Lord put I my trust. How say ye to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain. For lo, the wicked bend their bow. They make ready their arrow upon the string, that they may privately shoot at the upright in heart. If the foundations be destroyed, where can the righteous, what can the righteous do? Excuse me. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold, his eyelids try the children of men. The Lord trieth the righteous but the wicked in him that loveth violence his soul hateth. Upon the wicked shall he shall rain snares, fire, and brimstone, and a horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their cup. For the righteous Lord loveth righteousness. His countenance doth behold the upright. His countenance doth behold the upright. The subject this morning, the Lord loveth the righteous. The Lord loves the righteous. Um, in this particular psalm, David has a different attitude. And what I mean by that is that in this case, he is not um, distressed. He is not angry. He is not upset. But rather, he is responding to the um, mindset of his counselors. You know, you have people around you that love you and care for you and um, do what they can to help you. And oftentimes they get distressed because they see what is going on around you. They know the people that don't like you. They know the people that, for whatever reason, have something against you. They know the people that may even be plotting against you. And it's the counselors, it's the advisors that are distressed. It's the advisors, the advisors that are distressed. Their mood is almost a panic. But David is at peace. David is at peace. You know, people can see what you're going through and they can see what you're dealing with and they can get distressed and nervous and upset because of you. But when you have the right kind of fellowship with God, even in the midst of their distress, you have peace. Because David opens the psalm by saying, in the Lord put I my trust, my confidence, my faith, Hallelujah. It is in the Lord. I'm believing and trusting God. And there's no better place to be 
than in a mindset where you trust God. You simply trust God. Doesn't mean you don't see your problems. Doesn't mean you don't see your challenges or your difficulties. Doesn't mean that you aren't aware of what is going on. But at the core of your life, you are in trust or you are trusting in God and you have faith in God. David is not panicking. David is not distressed. David is simply giving a psalm of confidence. He really, hallelujah, is in confidence and in solidarity with the people, hallelujah, as his king. And so he's singing and he's glorifying God almost in two different voices because he hears what they're saying. They're telling David to flee, Fl flee, get out of town, David, run, run for your life because you got these people after you on your case, on your back. But he says, but, and he knows what's going on. Look at verse two, for lo, the wicked bend their bow. They're getting ready to shoot me. They're shooting arrows and darts at me that they and they make ready their arrow upon the string. In other words, David says, I know they have me in their sights. I know they're looking for me. I know they're pulled back the bow. They're getting ready to strike. And the thing about arrows is that for the most part, arrows are relatively silent. If you're a distance away, you can't hear the arrow being struck. You can't hear the bow being pulled back. It is a silent attack. Yes, some of us are in the midst of silent attacks because there are people that don't have the courage or the tenacity or even the integrity to come to you face to face with whatever they're going to do. They attack you from behind. They attack you. They, they attack your character. They talk about you behind your back. They say things about you that are ungodly. They say things about you that are simply untrue, but they do it surreptitiously. They do it in a stealth manner. They do it because they don't want to be exposed by what they're doing. But the Lord says, the Lord told David, they're after you, David. Yes, they are. All right. But then David makes an important statement in verse number three, he says, if the righteous, if the foundations rather be destroyed, what can the righteous do? In other words, if you walk away from the foundation of God, and this is important, it's important that even when you're under attack, that you not change your behavior. You might have to adjust for a season, but you don't change your core values. You don't allow the things that have sustained you and kept you and protected you all of these years. You don't abandon those things. You know, Satan wants us to abandon prayer. Satan wants us to abandon fasting. Satan wants us to abandon looking and reading and studying the word of God. Why? Because these things are foundational. Let me say it. These things are foundational. Prayer is foundational to the life of the believer. Reading and studying the word is foundational to the life of the believer. All right. Fasting is foundational to the life of the believer. And so his philosophical problem is what can a righteous person do when the remnant starts shrinking? You know, I worry about the church. I'm going to say it. I worry about the church because so many of the core members, so many of the core people who were fasting and praying and laying before God and trusting God, we didn't always notice them because they did what they did in, in the background. They were not upfront people. They were not folks always grabbing at a microphone, but they were the praying foundation of congregations. And as those people transition, many have been called home to be of the Lord. Some of them, the enemy has tried to sideline with sickness and other issues of themselves. But if those foundations are destroyed, if those foundations, if those practices and those people that observe those foundations, if they're destroyed, what can the righteous do? What can the righteous do? How are we going to make it if we no longer have the foundational people, the people that are trusting and believing and looking to God? Every church, every church has, they used to call them the pillars of the church. These are the people that you can count on to get a prayer through, that you can count on to lay before God, that you can count on to stand up for what is right. And in so many cases, they have gone on, they've transitioned, but who's replacing them? Who's, who's willing to stand? 
stand up and say, I'm a foundational member. I believe in the core values of the scripture. I believe in the destiny and the vision of the congregation. David is saying, if these people are removed, if they're destroyed, what can the righteous do? But here's what the righteous can do. Understand that God is always in control because he says what? The Lord is in his holy temple. Yes, people have passed away. Yes, people have gone away. Yes, people have fallen away, but the Lord is still in his temple. Almost every congregation has dealt with the loss of people, the reduced crowds on Sunday mornings, people not there like they used to be before the pandemic. Some passed away. We know that. Some got discouraged. We know that. Some simply are are still afraid of crowds. We know that. And we respect that. But guess what? The Lord is in the temple. God has not abandoned us. God has not left us. That's why David says, I can put my trust in him. Because if everybody else moved away, if if everybody else walked away. I still have God standing in the midst. His throne is in heaven and his eyes behold. I need you to get this saints. God sees. Oh Shatama. God sees. God sees everything. Everything we do and everything that is done to us. And if you're doing the will of God, I need to encourage you that God sees it. If you're walking with God, I need you to know that God sees it. If you're trusting God, I need you to know that God sees it. God is aware. God is aware. God is aware of every situation. His eyes behold and even his eyelids. His eyelids are, are transparent apparently because he's seeing even if you think his eyes are shut, God is still seeing. Even if you think that he's not aware, God is still seeing. God is still well aware of what is happening in your life. We talked about this yesterday. Lord, where are you? I know we get that feeling, but I came to remind you that God is still well aware of everything that is going on in your life. Look at verse number five. The Lord tries, tries the righteous. That means some things happen. Some things happen. Hallelujah, that are a test to the righteous. And God does allow those tests to come. We can't get away from it. We can't argue with it. God will allow those tests to come. Those tests come, those trials come. They, they really try to see what's in you because some of us don't know what's in ourselves. We really, some many of us are stronger than we actually believe. And yes, some of us are weaker than we actually believe. And so the Lord lets circumstances come to try us to test us for our own evaluation because some of us think we're all up here in the mountains and we're just super spiritual and then something comes that shakes our faith that rocks us to the core so that we understand I've got to dig deeper. I've got to go further. I thought I was a strong believer. I thought I was a foundational leader, but I've discovered I've still got some weaknesses and some things that are troubling and trying me and God is showing me that. And then there are some of us going through some stuff we thought we would never survive, but God is keeping us every day. God is sustaining us and holding us up and bearing us up and here we are rejoicing when we thought we would be somewhere in despair. Here we are celebrating God. Here we are rejoicing in the God of our salvation. Here we are lifting God up. Hey, God, surprising ourselves. Lord, I'm still here and I'm still praising you and I'm still working and I'm not letting what I'm going through discourage me to the point that I've given up, but I'm standing on that solid rock and I'm standing on that foundation. Why? Because God is real. But then the Bible says what? But the wicked and him that loveth violence, his soul hateth. I need you to understand that God is against the wicked. Whether they're attacking you or attacking somebody else, God is against the wicked. You need to understand that. And God's going to judge it, not just because it's you, but because it's wickedness. God's going to judge wickedness. God is going to judge wickedness. Verse 6, upon the wicked he shall rain snares, fire, brimstone. That's going to fall on the wicked. 
all right, and a horrible tempest shall be the portion of their cup. Understand, God will deal with the unrighteous. God will deal with the ungodly. God will deal with those that attack you on every side. God's going to deal with them. They don't understand the jeopardy they have placed themselves in by attacking a believer. Oh my God, the Bible says it's better that a millstone be hung around their neck and they be dropped in the bottom of the river than to offend the least little one of these. Trust me, God is watching. Hey, God, God has his eyes open. And look at verse number seven. For the righteous Lord loveth righteousness. The righteous Lord loveth righteousness. God loves it when we serve him and honor him and obey him and follow him. God loves it. You don't do it for show, but you do it because you love the Lord. And, and because you love the Lord, you do what is right. Don't let anybody, I hear you, Holy Ghost, don't let anybody's attack take you out of your character. Don't become vengeful. Don't become negative. Don't become, hallelujah, salty and complacent complaining, but you maintain your righteousness in God. You maintain your godliness in God. You stand up for what is right, and you don't have to be mean and negative and nasty to stand up for what is right. You can do it with a calm, long-suffering spirit because the righteous Lord loveth righteousness. He's a righteous God. And whenever we live righteously, we reflect his righteousness. And guess what? He is given us the righteousness of God by faith. You didn't get it because you followed a bunch of rules. You didn't get it because you did this, that, or the other. You were given righteousness, hallelujah, by the righteous God. He died. He became sin that we might become righteousness. And he has given us righteousness. And he expects us to live righteously. And when you walk and live righteously, you walk in the favor of God. Don't you know what the Bible says? I got to close. But no good thing if he will hold from them that walk upright, them that walk righteously. I'm telling somebody right now, the Lord's telling me to tell you. You're about to walk into favor. You're about to walk into grace. You're about to walk into miracles, signs, and wonders because the Lord loveth righteousness. You just do the right thing. You just do the right thing. You just walk according to the word and watch God bless your life. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Thank God for each of you. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we love you today. We thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your grace, your love, and your kindness. Jesus, you've been so very, very good that all we can say is thank you. You awakened us this morning and we were in our right mind and we were able to get out of the bed and get prepared to join this great cadre of believers, Lord, from all over the world. I thank you for the brothers and sisters of morning prayer. And I'm asking you in the name of Jesus, Lord, just to flood the prayer room with your glory. Whether we've come by Facebook or Instagram or YouTube or conference call, let everybody know at this moment, Lord, we are in the prayer presence of God. We are in your presence and we are thanking you today for another day. We are thanking you for everything that you have done. And God, we're praying today for everybody whose name is in the chat or sent by text or messenger or email. God, I thank you for them now. And Lord, we're praying for the needs of the people today. Lord, have your way right now and minister. Lord, remember Jordan and the MacArthur family. God, remember Earl Diamond. Remember Roy Lewis and Linda Diamond Lewis and their family. God, remember Shanae. Remember Gwen, God. Remember Pastor Terrence. Remember Dyer today. Lord, we're praying for Greater Refuge Temple of New York City. Greater Refuge Temple of Jacksonville. Greater Refuge Temple, my God, of Lakeland. Greater Refuge Temple of Charleston. We're praying for Greater Refuge Temple of Washington, D.C. We're praying, my God, for Refuge Temple in Burlington. Refuge Temple in Columbia. We're 
praying for Faith Refuge, my God, in Harrisburg. We're praying, my God, for Pastor Fears and Lady Fears in their church in the Poconos. We're praying, my God, that you remember the Community Church of Astoria. We're praying for the Salvation Church of Christ. We're praying for the Community Church of Island. We're praying for Shiloh Baptist, my God, in Plainfield. We're praying for Shiloh Apostolic Temple Cathedral, my God, in Atlantic City. We're praying, my God, for St. John's. We're praying, hallelujah, for Macedonia. Lord, for every congregation that's represented in this prayer today, we are thanking you now for life and health and strength and for every single blessing. My God, and we're praying for these churches that you would remember them, that you would strengthen them, that you would edify their leaders, that you would strengthen the pastor and the first lady and bless them in abundance. God, we're praying for Duchess Horton this morning. We're praying for Brother Aaron. We're praying, hallelujah, for her parents and the entire family. We're praying for Margot Briscoe today. We're praying for Cynthia Jackson Perry, Brother Perry, my God, and the entire family. We're praying for the Pew family and the grandchildren. We're praying for Joyce Tibbs. We're praying for Deacon Arnold Riley. God, that you would strengthen and help him now. We're praying, my God, for Twyla and Tyron. Oh, God, that you would be with them in the name of Jesus. We're praying for Joyce Tibbs. We're praying, my God, for Tiana Hopkins, for Mother Morris and Minister Morris. We're praying for Sylvia Matthews today. We're praying for Patricia Thomas. We're praying, my God, for this war that drags on in the Ukraine. We're praying for the war that is heating up in Sudan. Lord, step in. Hey, Step in, God, in the name of Jesus. We're praying for Deacon and Sister Graves and their family. We're praying, my God, for Bishop Charles Wright and Mother Faye Wright. We're praying for Bishop William Wilkins today, my God, Sister Sarah Wilkins. God, we're praying, Lord, for everybody. Oh, my God, every need that's in this prayer room today, Lord, stretch out your hand. Lord, we're praying for the unsaved this morning. God, that you would save to the utmost. Lord, stretch out your hand. Touch the heart. Touch the spirit today. God, bring repentance. Oh, Shandana Masi, bring faith today and let them be born of the water and of the spirit. God, I'm praying today for the backslider that you would reclaim and restore. I'm praying for that struggling believer that it feels overwhelmed by life, God, that feels depressed by life, that you would step in and touch them now. In the name of Jesus, let your mighty blood prevail by the power of the Holy Ghost. God, I'm praying for even the unspoken requests that are on this line today. Lord, you minister to every need, every necessity. Lord, you touch now by the power of the Holy Ghost. God, I'm praying for healing today for the sick, sick people everywhere, but nevertheless, we trust you and believe you. Thank you for what you're doing, my God. Hallelujah for Deacon Adams. Remember him now. Remember in the name of Jesus, Deacon Harrison today. Remember, my God, Deacon Wilson right now. Remember Elder Toll. Lord, I'm praying for Crystal. Oh, God, and Crystal. I'm praying for Kesey Summers. I'm praying for Addie, for James Woodson, for Miracle Destiny. I'm praying for Christian. I'm praying for Mother Higgins and Lisa Wiggins. I'm praying for Mother Patterson today. Praying for Myra Crawford. Praying for Deborah Horton, for Alexis Smith, for Lamont Edwards, for Joyce Young. I'm praying for Gloria Young, for Charles Reese. I'm praying for Donna Schaefer. I'm praying for missionary Joyce Domingo, missionary Brisbane. Missionary Roseman, Missionary Hodges today. I'm praying for Deacon Grant this morning in the name of Jesus. I'm praying, my God, for Pastor and Lady Winston. I'm praying for Bishop D, for Apostle Keith, Lord. Stretch out your healing hand. God, we're praying. We're lifting up Bishop Alfonso Brooks, Mother Shirley Clark, Mother Evangeline Jenkins, Lady Andrea Maxwell, Mother Carol Coleman today, Bishop Mac Vincent, Mother Barbara Vincent, Mother Celestine Peters. I'm praying today, my God. Hallelujah for Bishop Gregory Wilder. Bishop Irving Taylor, Bishop Alvin Palmer, Apostle, hallelujah, Herbert Edwards today, Apostle Leroy Joseph, Apostle Charles Williams, Apostle Sylvester Norwood. Lord, remember them now in the name of Jesus. I'm praying today that you will remember the sick everywhere. Lord, touch them. Remember Mother Carol Coleman this morning. Remember Sister Shakaya Polk. We're praying today, my God, for Pastor Carr and Minister Carr. We're praying today that you remember, my God, Brother Wiggins, my God, Brother and Mother Sherrod, Deacon and Mother Garland today. Lord, remember them, touch them, strengthen them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I'm praying, oh God, for your healing virtue to be dispatched upon everybody that's sick, Lord. Remember, 
My God, Elder Tyson, Elder Smith, remember Mother Foster, Henry J, Brother Cliff, remember, oh God, Dr. and Sister Hayward, Dr. Hayward's mother, remember Mother Jill, Mother Pride, my God, stretch out your hand, Lord, to Mother Carter today, Lord God, Mother Chambers, Mother Moorhead, God, remember Lady Staten, Lord, everybody everywhere that's sick, Lord, we need your grace and your healing, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, God, walk into every hospital, God, remember, my God, Mother Foster, Henry J, Brother Cliff, remember Mother Tanaj, Mother Holm and Missionary Simmons, remember Cynthia, Catherine and Duchess today, remember, oh God, Maurice, remember Marlette today, remember Tony, remember, hallelujah, Dennis this morning, remember Kimberly, everybody that's sick, Lord, touch their bodies in the name of Jesus Christ, in every hospital, nursing home, rehab center, in the cancer ward, the COVID ward, the ICU unit, the dialysis unit, God, touch today, touch Paul this morning, in the name of Jesus Christ, and bring healing and give comfort to his family right now, God, I'm praying for healing virtue, because you are the bomb in Gilead, Lord, we're praying for grieving people everywhere, remember Nikki and family, Sister Rosina Scott, Sister Candy Craig today, the Colts family, remember Mother Sally Carr and the Carr family, remember the Nun family, the Austin family, the Kenlock family, remember Lady Janet Brown's family, remember the Norwood Gray family, remember the families of shooting victims, the families of, Na oh God, the victims of natural disasters, remember Apostle Charles Williams, remember my God, hallelujah Mother Moya, remember, oh God, hallelujah Perry, remember Jaleesa this morning, remember the Poole family, remember the Hill family, remember Sister Lusford family, the Howie family, the Raymond family, God give comfort in the name of Jesus, we're praying my God for grieving people everywhere, remember Lady Andrea Maxwell, Charles and Cedric and the family, remember my God in the name of Jesus, Dr. Phyllis Carter and the family, remember Bishop Michael Fields, Shekinah and the family, remember Lord in the name of Jesus, Mother Ida Harrell and the family, remember Mother Jacqueline Grant and the family, remember the Groover family God, remember them in a special way, remember the Hargroves, the Kramers, the Blood family, God everybody that's grieving everywhere, the Bottoms, the Tabors, the Lloyds, the Carters, the Giles family, remember my God the Meadows family, the Moyer family, remember Lord in the name of Jesus the Perkins family, God remember the Dockery family, remember Sister Pam, her mom, my God and her sisters, Lord touch Lord and strengthen in the name of Jesus, we pray for the White family, we pray for Anita and the Brian Hopkins family, Margie and the McLean Melvin and Street family, for the Ransom family, God we're praying. We're praying today that you would remember my God, the Jackson family, the Ned family, the Gwen, oh God, remember Gwen today, remember my God, hallelujah, every grieving family in your precious name, touch them, sustain them, support them, remember Brenda and the Alan McNeely family, remember Sean and Monique and the Gary Porter family, remember Trell and Ryan, oh God, and the Alan Williams family, God, remember the Green family today, remember in the name of Jesus, Tommy and Michelle and the Clark family and the Smith family, remember the Mays, the Dunlaps, the Purdy's, the Sneeds, the Washington Fields family, remember the Winninghams, the Bankses, remember the Middletons and the Taylors, God, remember, my God, in your precious name, the Felix family, the Zapata family, the Maddox, the Boojums, the Gleams, the Arthurs, the Matherins today, remember my God, hallelujah, the Briggs family, remember the Phillips and the Taylors and the Josephs, remember Pastor and Lady Manning, remember Pastor Stevens today, in the name of Jesus, God, remember grieving people, the Davises, God, the Austins, the Harbisons, my God, remember the Allens, the Caldwells, the Hayses, the Moors, oh God, remember the Adams family, every grieving widow, every grieving widow were every grieving child, parent, sibling, loved one, God give them comfort. I pray for the body of Christ today. Every apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, every bishop and elder, every first lady, every mother and missionary, ministers and deacons, all the pastors, children, all of the young people today. I pray, God, that you remember every musician, singer, and psalmist. God, look on the people right now and give them grace and strength and power. God, strengthen the church that we might have confidence in you. You. Lord, strengthen the church that we might have our trust in you. God, and hold us, sustain us, keep us through our tests and our trials. God, I'm praying today for first responders, essential workers, firemen, policemen, EMTs. I'm praying today that you remember school employees and students everywhere. God, remember everybody that works to help other people in private duty, in hospitals, nursing homes, rehab centers. Oh, God, clinics, banks, stores, factories. God, remember, cover them, protect them, 
keep them from sickness, disease, hurt, and harm in the name of Jesus. And we pray, God, that you would heal the sick everywhere. And Lord, as you're healing sickness, as you're healing from surgery, God, heal this troubled land. Lord God, all over the world there's trouble, but you are the bomb in Gilead. So God, heal the land. Heal the land from sin. Heal the land from violence, from hatred, from jealousy. Heal the land from injustice. Hashiachama. Heal the land, God, in the name of Jesus. And let the church be the light of the world and the salt of the earth. God, we need you today. Cover, keep us, and protect us. And we give your name the glory, the honor, and praise. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Everybody on this line, come on, join me right now in giving God praise. Everybody, everybody. Hallelujah. Offer God praise. Offer God praise. Offer God praise. Hallelujah. 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 Hey, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. This is my declaration for today. Lord, keep me in righteousness. Lord, keep me in righteousness. I want to do the right thing. I want to say the right thing. I want to act in the right way, not only in public. I want to be righteous in private. I want to be righteous, hallelujah, not in my own righteousness, not in self-righteousness, but in the righteousness of God that comes by faith. Lord, keep me righteous. Lord, when I'm tempted to stumble, when I'm tempted to go backwards, when I'm tempted to turn the other way, Lord, just keep me, hallelujah, keep me in righteousness. I just want to do the will of God for the rest of my life. Hallelujah. I just want to do the will of God. So Lord, keep me in righteousness. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Thank you so much for being with us. I'm trusting that this biblical meditation and prayer has blessed you and that your Monday is off to a great start. Look, you can stay connected to Refuge Temple all day today. This prayer service is available on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Thank God for our conference call listeners. You can also go back on face on Facebook or YouTube and watch the services, the Sunday school. You can watch Sunday school from yesterday. Mother Ganey taught a great lesson on the family, holiday on the family of God. You can also join our morning worship and how God blessed us Sunday in Refuge Temple. You can also be a part of, of the gathering. We had some tech issues last night, but it's on. Um, it is on Facebook, so you can watch the gathering from last night where we talked about faith as part of the fruit of the Spirit. So thank God for you and your support. You can also stay connected through our podcast, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, SoundCloud, and Spotify. All of this is available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Our radio broadcast airs every day, Monday through Friday at 8.30 a.m. on GregoryGospel.com. GregoryGospel.com and you can join the radio broadcast. Let me thank everybody that sees and souls and shares with this ministry. Your gifts help us to do so many things that we need to do and we appreciate the gifts and we appreciate you. And this is Sacrifice Monday so you can make a gift. No gift too large, no gift too small. And you can sow a seed to Refuge Temple P.O. Box 3552 Burlington, North Carolina 27215. That's Refuge Temple P.O. Box 3552 Burlington, North Carolina 27215. You can give online. Our website is www refuge temple n is in north c is in carolina dot com refuge temple nc dot com you can give your gift on the donate page if you have the givelify app you just simply type in refuge temple burlington you'll see a picture of the church to know you're in the right place and you make your gift there or if you have cash app our cash app is dollar sign the number one refuge dollar sign one refuge and you make your gift there and we thank you for your giving but we thank you most of all for being a part of our morning prayer family because God is blessing people all over the world. I told you, Saturday morning at 2 a.m., I was teaching in oh God by, by FaceTime in India, in India to the pastors there, and, and, and this fellowship came as a result of morning prayer. There are churches being added because of the work that's going on literally all over the world. So thank you for being a part of the morning prayer family. And yes, souls are being saved, delivered, set free, reclaimed, restored, healed, because we are praying together each morning at 6:30. So 
thank God for you. Keep praying for me. Pray for Lady Davis. Pray for our children. Pray for my father. Pray for my sisters, my in-laws, our nieces, our nephews, our entire family. Let's pray, hallelujah, for Refuge Temple that God would continue to bless us. And let's pray one for another that we might walk in the will of God and stand in his holy place. The Lord keep us in righteousness. The Lord keep us in righteousness. Until next time, this is Pastor Davis. God bless each of you. Shalom, shalom. Thank <laughs> you.